e, şimdi e, Zek e, ona da ayet etmek istiyorum. Kendisi Yield Planet'ten. E, Yield Planet e, aslında e, Yolcu Hanım'a bahsettiği Zek. Can you please yeah. come? Yeah. E, Revue Management sistemlerini geliştiren bir şirket. E, Zek de bu e, Revue Management sistemlerinin arka tarafındaki algoritmaların nasıl e, gelişmesi gerektiğini kurgulayan, e, bu konuda uluslararası anlamda birçok ödülü olan, uluslararası anlamda birçok zincirin e, danışmanlığını yapmış, bu konuda dünyada çok önemli isimlerden birisi. E, I'm saying good things about you. <gülüyor> Ee, kendisi İstanbul'a daha dün geldi, ilk defa gelmiş. Şehrimizi çok sevmiş. Yani gözleri parlıyor anlatırken falan. Güzel bir şehrimiz var. İnşallah bu e, pratiklerle de e, turizm anlamında da hak ettiği yere getireceğiz. Now, I'm leaving you. Good afternoon, my name is Zach Ali and I'm Director of Global Revenue Development. As Erhan said, I'm associated with the Yield Planet. However, my background actually is hotels, so I'm not just somebody off the street. Um, I have lots of, I have many years of revenue management experience in hotels. And today I'm going to be talking to you about one of my most favorite subjects, which is segmentation, but also I'll assist you with competitor analysis as well. Now my two revenue colleagues here have already touched on different aspects of revenue management, so if anything does get duplicated, then um, I, I apologize in advance. So what I actually want to do is I actually want you guys to think of a question, which I'm going to ask you now, all the way through my talk today. So is it time to rethink segmentation? This is the question, okay? Now, um, if you guys sat here now as hoteliers can answer most of these questions, so some questions like, what factors are influencing our market conditions? Um, in terms of pricing, you're looking at price sensitivity. So how sensitive is the customer to the price that you're actually willing to charge? And by making any changes, how does it have an impact on your demand? Uh, do you have sales strategies and pricing strategies in place for segmentation? And, you know, then to stay lead time, different trends of segmentation also. So, it's about rethinking whether or not you have the right level of data for you to analyze and accurately create your segments that you have in your hotel today. So what is market segmentation? I mean, we've had a, a brief um, overview in terms of what revenue management is, but if I can just add on to that, generally speaking, it's about subdividing the markets, uh, looking at channels, customers, basically customers who have, understanding the different level of needs that customers actually have. So ensuring that you can react to any customer that walks into your hotel, it's vital for you to understand basically how the segment behaves, right? So just some pointers on here. Now, I haven't obviously got that much time to go through the whole list, and there are more that we can add here. But uh, just to give you an overview, some positive um, drivers for accurate segmentation. So here we have some. So targeted sales and marketing activities. So when I say targeting sales and marketing activities, I mean, as, as hoteliers, or more importantly, as revenue managers, it's important that we understand the net profitability of each segment. By understanding the net profitability of each segment, we can ensure our sales and marketing departments or divisions accurately focus on bringing in the right business at the right time. You've all heard of the right, uh, the right reservation at the right time through the right channel. This is all basic revenue management, but it's about more segmentation. So it's about bringing in the right business at the right time, okay? Increased guest retention. I mean, I know this is an issue, and I think we have booking.com in the room, so hi, whatever you are. Um, this is obviously an issue in terms of trying to increase retention and get bookings directly through your own website. Uh, obviously, uh, with the likes of the OTAs helping from a marketing point of view, this is a great benefit. But truly understanding the, se the sales and marketing activities will ensure that you take your customer and your operational delivery and basically match both, both of them so that you have an increase in your guest retention for new customers and also for existing customers. This is one way you can start to drive more traffic to your own website. Okay. Um, Targeted pricing, so each segment reacts differently to price propositions. 
uh, basically known as price sensitivity. Obviously, we've had a quick overview on pricing before, but uh, the fundamental aspect of pricing is understanding the price sensitivity, so understanding how the customer will react to you changing your price, so going from five euros to 10 in terms of the difference, how will that customer react? So it's important that you understand the sensitivity of the actual segment in terms of pricing, okay? And then, of course, increased market share of the desired segment. So again, by accurately segmenting your business, you will, as a business, understand how you can take your desired segment and actually grow it, but more importantly, ensure that you are matching your customer expectations with your operational delivery, okay? This is vital. Also, it will allow you to look at your secondary segments. So segments which you need to have more of a focus on in terms of your distress periods. And last but not least, it will ensure that you take a wider approach to your segmentation and you contribute correctly to the net profitability of segments and basically come away from the segments that have a high acquisition cost, okay? And then obviously on the flip side of that, incorrect segmentation, again, just frequently overlooked by hotels. Some pointers here, again, there's a list of more possibilities that can occur. Uh, what will happen if your segmentation is incorrect? So starting off with forecasting, I know we've had a session on forecasting before, um, but generally speaking, if you don't forecast, if, if you don't know who is your, um, let me start again, if you don't know which customer is actually coming through your door and what is the purpose of their visit, otherwise known as segment, then it becomes very challenging for the revenue manager to actually create a good forecast. So forecasting should be done on a daily basis and again per segment for you to actually truly understand the impact on your business. And then basically once you have the forecast in place, you can then decide from a sales and marketing point of view what activities you need to have to follow that forecast. Okay? Uh, pricing strategies. I've mentioned the, some of the positives there. I will quickly flip over to the negatives. Uh, in terms of pricing strategies, if your forecasting is wrong, then your pricing strategies will have an impact because forecasting comes and then pricing in revenue management. Okay? So by having inaccurate pricing strategies, it will basically cause the revenue manager to not understand the true potential of the total segments that you have available. So pricing should be done per segment, okay? And if your revenue manager cannot see or analyze truly um, what is the potential for each segment, then it's gonna cause underpricing and overpricing, and it's gonna create a price war, which I'm sure we're all aware of, right? Obviously it doesn't happen in Istanbul, right? Cool, so okay, incorrect sales and marketing activities. Basically what it says in the tin, you know, if your sales and marketing activities are not set correctly, then you know, we all know how expensive it is to try and get business into the hotel, hotels. And um, by not having accurate segmentation, uh, this again will cause the um, sales and marketing department to focus on only short-term goals, not long-term goals. And that's really where the focus should be. And strategy impact basically is the top three um, combined together. And this will occur if you don't have optimized segmentation. Okay, great. So basically, every hotel can start off by uh, looking at accurate segments. You don't actually need to, you know, you don't actually need to go through bits and bats in terms of here. You can start off by looking at the definition of segmentation. So if we have a look at the first definition of segmentation, measurability. So for you to identify, is this actually a segment in my hotel? First of all, you need to understand whether or not you can measure the business coming into the city very importantly. So if we look at, for example, corporate segment, can you actually, do you actually know how much business is actually coming in to your markets from a corporate point of view, if that's your desired segment, okay? Secondly speaking, if once you have that data, then as a hotel, what do you actually have in place for you to actually be able to understand the true level of demand you are achieving for that particular segment that you desire, okay? And then next, actionability. So your product offering and your pricing, are they interesting or are they just like your competitors next door? So what is it that makes you different from a segmentation point of view that the customer will actually come to you and they will not go to the, the competitor next door? Okay, and obviously the million dollar question, can they actually book a room at your hotel? So it's good to have segments, but uh, can the customer actually make a reservation at your hotel for the particular segment that you're actually targeting? So it's something that you need to consider. Um, accessibility, 
The flip side to the previous point is can you as a hotel actually reach the segment that you wish to look at? So again, if I go back to my, uh, my corporate example, you know, are you on the right GDS platforms? Are you utilizing GDS as much as you can? Is your Sabre Spotlight promotions, you know, accurate? Is your positioning on GDS accurate? Again, it all falls part of correct segmentation. And then last but not least, is the segment actually viable? So for you to invest money and resources into actually getting that business, do you know the cost of the segment? Do you know the price willingness of the customer? How much they're actually willing to pay? And do you know the level of profitability? And more importantly, does that segment give you the right level of demand for your hotel? So I see quite frequently hotels that make mistakes where they tend to segment just following their competitors, but they might have 80 bedrooms and the competitor might have 400 bedrooms. So the, the mix of business is very different. Therefore, it's, you know, it's very um, clear that you have to segment only based on your own hotel. Okay. So I've just given you a bit of an overview here of how you can actually start to define segments. But um, here, again, not all the points. Um, what key considerations do you as hotels need to take into consideration when you are coming up with an optimal segment? So you need to understand the customer behavior or the lifestyle of the customer and the pricing and the buying behavior of the customer. Now, it's a chicken and egg situation. So you have to understand, is my customer behavior actually influencing my pricing behavior or is my pricing behavior actually influencing my customer behavior? For every hotel, I can tell you, I've worked with hundreds of hotels around the globe. For every hotel, it is different. So don't just follow your competitor. Truly do what you need to do for your own business, okay? But you can see here some points to look at. So when you're analyzing customer behavior, take a look at the product offering, the ancillary spend, so the incremental revenue that that segment's actually bringing you, and how loyal are they from a segmentation point of view? So your corporate's more segment uh, loyal than your transients, or whatever, vice versa. Again, from a pricing point of view, it, like I said before, it's very important that you understand price sensitivity. If you guys don't take anything back from me today, take back price sensitivity, because it is exceptionally important that you understand not only what it actually is, but how to actually calculate it, okay? Uh, because it truly allows you to take your hotel to the next level. Um, again, lead times and booking conditions, um, and that's from a uh, pricing behavior point of view. Contribution, so um, from a product point of view, how much contribution that product is actually giving your hotel, uh, how much ancillary spend and the loyalty from a customer's point of view and then cost again channel cost profits and the positioning like I said before about the GDS you've got to have a look to see uh, how you're um, how you're being positioned on the channels okay um, so we have here a segmentation optimization cycle now I'm assuming or maybe or maybe not you guys are familiar with the revenue optimization cycle so the revenue optimization cycle, obviously, is a forecast, optimization, monitor, and control. It's similar to segmentation. So as segmentation is constantly evolving, this is why I asked you the question, is it the right time for you to rethink segmentation? As it's evolving and it's linked with pricing and linked with forecasting and linked with budgets, you change those, I mean, budgets every year, forecasting every month, pricing almost every day. You know, you want to make sure that your segmentation is also constantly evolving. So start off with the uh, historical data that you currently have in your PMS and analyze the business mix, the performance of the actual segment, and again, the profitability of that particular segment. And then take a look at new market opportunities. So what's actually coming in? You can, you, everybody's got access to data in your markets to see exactly what customer uh, is coming into your markets which weren't here before, okay? Uh, then set your uh, goals, so your hotel goals. Where, where are you now? What do you want to do in the next 12 months? What distribution platforms do you actually have? And most importantly, what people do you have to drive that distribution? Okay. Um, the next one, implement new segments and revenue annually. So basically execute, okay? Execute your new segments and then evaluate. And then I would recommend you look at this cycle at least every six months and basically follow the cycle around in the the way obviously it goes, for you to be able to truly understand uh, you know, where you are from a segmentation point of view. Oh, my cycle's just moved now. So I know we're short on time, but I just quickly will go over competitor set. Sorry, I hope you don't mind. Um, so I need to speak about competitors. Um, 
basically, I'm sure we all know what a competitive set is. It's a defined as a group of hotels by you know, the property in terms of who they compare themselves to. The reason why I really want to go over this is because I think you guys probably can take something from it. Um, so benchmarking basically is very important within the competitor set. So when you do benchmarking, these are some of the informations that you should look at exactly when you are you know, devising your benchmark from a competitor point of view. You need to ultimately complete a SWOT analysis. Now a SWOT analysis should be completed in two parts. Um, first part is doing a SWOT analysis of your internal offering, so strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats from the internal hotel point of view, and then again from an external point of view also. And then you evaluate the data. Now what you must remember is a SWOT analysis must be done but, uh, per segment, per major segment, to give you the true accuracy. And secondly, you need to be looking at the SWOT really from an independent point of view, and remember the customer point of view. I always recommend somebody else do it for the hotel, you don't ever do it yourself. Okay, once you have the SWOT analysis complete, um, you need to complete a value assessment. So a value assessment is a very strategic tool which basically allows you to compare and rank your property with your competitors. Now you must always remember that zero is neutral and that's exactly where you guys are as a hotel. Okay, and then if your competitor scores higher or lower, it's, plus, it's up to plus five or minus five. And uh, this needs to be done when completing a value assessment. Here I have some factors for you to take a look at, but obviously there's a lot more. I myself, when I do competitor analysis, um, I look at a lot, around 20 different variables, which I couldn't really put on there. But obviously feel free to speak to me after. Um, completing a value assessment. Once your ratings have been done, you would then go and enter the information here, and then you would compare yourselves in comparison to the competitor to give you a better understanding of what uh, your position is and what the competitor position is itself. And then ultimately you will end up with something like this. Now this is basically will take the guessing game out of you doing your competitor analysis. Okay? When you see the competitors line up in the primary competitor slope, these are your true competitors. So you will truly identify who your competitors are and then basically where do they rank. So I always, always recommend having no more than six competitors. So one position, two, three, four, five, six, you will be able to rank exactly here what is your competitor assessment. And then to analyze you know, some questions that you want to um, take into consideration. I see many of you guys have put your phones out, so feel free to take a shot. Um, and then you know, give you a bit of information there. And then some of the benefits of benchmarking, you know, it can help with pretty much all your revenue strategy decisions, your budgets, your pricing. I mean, every, going back to segmentation, every, pricing needs to, every segment needs to have a pricing and a marketing strategy followed with it. And this basically also correlates with that as well, okay? Sorry it was a little bit rushed at the end, but I don't really have much time. I hope that was okay for you. Feel free to talk to me after, and thank you very much. Thank you, sir.